All right, this tutorial is going to introduce you to how we can use Google Sheets to actually analyze the data from your Torque project. We're going to be using Google Sheets because as a spreadsheet, it has some pretty cool features that will allow us to do some calculations for a large group of numbers. I'm going to open up Google Sheets by just clicking on the little nine dots there by my Google main bar. And there's many ways you can open up Sheets. This is just one of them. I will select Sheets and then go ahead and start a blank sheet. You can open up easily from Drive as well. But this is what you see once Google Sheets opens up. It looks like many other spreadsheet programs where we basically have a grid in front of us. And the grid is actually broken up where the columns are labeled with letters and the rows are labeled with numbers. When you click on a particular little box, it's called a cell. You'll see that the appropriate row and column are colored differently so you can identify what cell that is. So for instance, this is the A5 cell, this is the D2 cell, and so forth. So spreadsheets are great because they allow us to make really nice tables, but we can also do a lot of calculations, which is where their real power lies. We're going to have you create a table and use this spreadsheet to actually record not only the measurements, but to also do the calculations for the data in your Torque Mobile project. Let's go ahead and begin by setting up our table. So we're going to put our column headings in this first row. And we're going to go ahead and do this so that we can remember and know what we're going to be entering in for each of our pieces of information. So our first column is going to be like the, the object label. And this could be like A or B or 1, 2, etc. So whatever we've decided to label it in our um, picture that you included in your analysis. Now you'll notice right away that it's spreading over into the B cell. Okay, so what we're going to do actually is we're going to, and you can do this for any of your cells, I'm going to go over here to this button here that talks about text wrapping. And when I click that, I'm going to choose this middle option, which is called text wrap, and that will allow it to continue on the next line. It made the cell a little bit taller so that everything fit in there, which is a nice feature to be aware of. Now we're going to go ahead and start thinking about each of the objects that we include. Um, we're going to be needing to record their mass. And I'm going to put the unit in the heading, grams. Um, you, when you enter your numbers into this, you do not want to include the letter G. Because when we do calculations, Google Sheets and Excel and all these spreadsheet programs will not like it when you have a letter mixed with a number and you're trying to do some kind of calculation. So as a general rule, we always put our units in the title of that particular column. We know that in physics, we like to have our mass expressed in kilograms. So this column will be mass in kilograms. This next one is going to be our weight because that is the force in Newtons, capital N, that actually will result in the torque. And then we're going to start thinking about in calculating the torques, we need to know the distance from the force to the pivot. And you're going to probably measure that in centimeters. Oops, looks like another chance for me to wrap the text. And ultimately, when we calculate our torque, we would like it to be in meters. So we will do distance from force to pivot. And then that will be in meters. And you can see I have the need to wrap the text here. You could actually highlight all of these cells at once and click that button at the end if you are comfortable with that. And then our final column will be actually the torque that we calculate. And the torque, as you know, is measured in Newton meters. All right, so what we've got here is all of our headings ready to use. Um, and in terms of like layout, some things that's nice to do is sometimes it's nice to make your headings bold. Um, another nice thing to do with how we can make it appear nice is actually use this little button here called the vertical alignment. It's kind of nice to have all of your titles centered across the row so that it looks very uniform. And even then centering within the cell itself kind of makes the table look very nice. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just start creating some fake data. And you are going to be 
doing your own things here. I was going to E, F, G, H. And then I'm going to start doing some numbers as well. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice that depending on letters or numbers, they sometimes by default end up in a particular spot. You can put them all in the middle by selecting that column and choosing the centering button like you see here. Now, we need to have masses of all of our beams and all of our objects. You are told to do that uh, massing when you are actually beginning the construction of your mobile. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some numbers in here. And these are fake numbers that I'm just making up for the sake of this tutorial. And it's a chance for you to see how our calculations will work when we are going through the actual process of using the spreadsheet. All right, so these are all masses in grams. And I'm going to also enter in some distances for the pivot. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll just put a number in there and just leave it for now. And I'm going to talk about what I'd like you to do next. So this is the number we have right now. We've got the mass in grams. Let me show you now the power of the spreadsheet. So right now, up here in this little function bar, when I click on a cell, we can see what the contents of that cell actually are. So here is B in the content cell for A3. For this one here, which is B5, it's 567. What we're going to do right now is we are going to show um, the power of spreadsheets by actually performing a calculation. We're going to convert from grams to kilograms. And we're going to do that so that in this column, we actually just take the number that's here and do the conversion by means of a calculation. And so here's how we do that. We want to tell the computer that I want this cell right here, which is C2. I want this one to be equal, and so I typed an equal sign, equal to this cell, which is the one right next to that, B2. I don't want it to be equal exactly. I want it to be equal to this one, but then divided by 1,000. So I'm going to do slash 1,000 because then it will tell me how many kilograms it is because there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. And as a result, you'll notice it's 0.234 kilograms, which was from our 234 grams. So that's the calculation that was con uh, computed here. Now notice when I type or when I click on this cell B2, it has 234 there. When I click on C2, it doesn't have 234. It has the calculation that was done using B2's cell information, that 234. So this actually is storing a calculation. And then we get the number of the answer to that calculation is displayed in the cell itself. Now, I have to do this same calculation all the way down through all of these objects. So I have a couple of choices. One, I could go ahead and just type that formula over and over and over. Two, I could go ahead and copy the formula here because when I copy this cell, I'm going to hit Control C to copy that cell. If I click Control V to paste it, notice it pasted the calculation, but it adjusted correctly. Instead of saying B2, now it says B3, which is exactly what we like. So I could go ahead and copy this all the way down. Another way you can do that as a shortcut is by using this little blue square. When I bring my mouse over to that blue square, the cursor becomes a plus. And what I can do is I can drag this blue square and it will fill that formula all the way down so that the calculations are now all finished. So it's pretty powerful that I just did all of those calculations in just a couple seconds. That's really what the beauty of a spreadsheet is. It can do multiple calculations very quickly. We're going to do that same thing one more time when we determine the weight of each of these objects. We know the mass. We can figure out the weight by actually using the results of our gravitational field strength understanding. So, as you recall, if I know how many kilograms an object is, I can figure out its weight by multiplying by 9.8 newtons for every kilogram. That's our gravitational field strength. Now, we'll do the same thing that we did over here, where we will say we want this number equal to a calculation based on an earlier number. So I'm going to say equal to this one, which is calling C2, which is the mass of our first object A. But now we're going to go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to do star, because that's times 9.8. Now I know in class, I've been very 
very adamant about making sure that you put newtons for every kilogram because that's what that 9.8 is, the gravitational field strength. But like I said before, in a spreadsheet program, you put, can't put letters with these numbers to make the calculations make sense. So when I hit enter, it goes ahead and it's calculated the weight of this object, and it's 2.2932, and the units would be newtons because that's what's in our title belt. Okay? Do the same thing. I can copy this, or I can just grab onto that little blue corner cursor, drag it all the way down, and boom, I just calculated the weight of all of these objects. So I think you can maybe see now some of the beauty of a spreadsheet, and that is because it can calculate all of those calculations very quickly. What we're going to ask you to do for this project is, based on the distances that you measure using our centimeter ruler, we would like you and your group to go ahead and do two more calculations with this spreadsheet. The first one is another conversion where we convert from centimeters to a meter. So we'll ask you to determine what we need to put into this cell so that it actually will convert it into meters. And then the most important, most important calculation from the whole thing is how we can actually measure the torque that each of these forces results in. So we're going to ask you to come up with a way to calculate the torque from the information on this spreadsheet. And you would copy both of those columns all the way down. So when you are done with your chart, you will be able to go ahead and click and drag on the whole thing. And then you could right click and then choose copy and then you would paste that into a google doc and that google doc would be something that we could paste into and here's a blank google doc i have right here when i paste into it it will ask me do i want to link it to the spreadsheet the answer is yes because when you paste it into there what it will do is if you go back to your google sheet and you realize, you know what, I forgot to add in some of those distances, 25, 26, and then I go back to my Google Doc, and I click on this, what you'll see is, oh, update. I can go ahead and I can update this so that now the 25 and 26 are present in this as well. So you want to paste it, linking it to the spreadsheet so that if you make a correction, it will fix itself in the Google Doc. So I hope that that is a nice introduction for what we can do with Google Sheets and how we will go ahead and adjust um, formatting, how we will enter numbers into cells, how we will do calculations in a way to allow us to analyze the torques that we have created in a very efficient and effective manner. Thanks for watching.